Hello, good day. I am Topman Paul Duque. If you're watching this right now, we are a team of um, training software engineers who decided to become React developers in two months. And without knowing what we are up to, we set out and having, I mean, getting to know that we needed a good knowledge of JavaScript and what the uh, ES6 standard brought to uh, into existence, I mean, the changes they made. So we decided to learn JavaScript in the first two weeks. And today is the 12th. This is section five, the sixth section we've had. And if you're following, uh, please do what we inspired to do a lot on your own because what we do here is um, we inspire one another to to do things as individuals because if you follow only these videos you just might not have enough so walk do some things on your own so today according to the plan we were supposed to be talking about promises um async and await in, in javascript but i discovered that the plan the plan is that doesn't look efficient enough i mean that plan was given to us by chat gdp and I have tried, I think I've tried, I've followed that plan, leading the team, I followed that plan very well. And that plan says between the 11 to the 13, you're supposed to be studying, learning these things. And tomorrow is the 13, so we'll see how one day. And we're following. But I, 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 realized, I, recognized, I realized that there was no object-oriented programming in that plan. I mean, there was no, no heading or concept that, is, that will push us to go and learn things like, I mean, class, you know, do stuff, you know, static method. I mean, that was, there's no room for us to learn how to write methods. <laughs> so I said, okay, I think it's important we pay attention to these things and pay attention to certain uh, um, basic concepts that some of us may have read as individuals and learn them together and share knowledge. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to continue from where, first of all, from where you stopped yesterday. Let's see what we can do with that website and to make sure I don't tamper with. Um, um the work the last time i'm gonna go to that repository and have another directory created i just like it being there i like the work being there so that anyone who follows us can see the work and maybe try to do the assignment or things like that so gss um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a new directory. I'll call it section five. I think I want to copy what I have. I think I want to copy what I have in section four. So I'll just copy it recursively. into a new directory named section five and then we're gonna make all the changes or modification we want to make so i haven't done that uh, i want to open this direction my vs code so I, I, I wouldn't do that from the command line because it's already open here so i'll just ta 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 open folder and um, special directory is six here we go Okay, so this is it, section five. And here is our code practice on HTML. I mean, we didn't follow convention this time. <laughs> and here's our script. Come on, what's happening? Okay, here's our style sheet. Great work, right? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to open, I'm going to go live with this, just to continue from where we stopped. Am I live? Yeah, so this is what we produced the last time. Uh, so we had something like this. 
Okay, my browser is actually in the dark mode. That's why this thing is white. Okay. <laughs> okay, this guy appears black in some browser. So if I take it off, ah, uh -huh. okay, that's cool. That's cool. Will this thing work in another browser? Let me try. Let me try. Yes. And the live server would recognize. Okay. And continue uh, serving that, that yes. one. All right. Great. Ah, uh, so this is the reface. This is the real thing. You're making me because I chose that team. Okay, let's let's just leave it for now. So we're using this. Uh, let me just be sure that this guy can serve me live here. So, but well, it should serve me live. I mean, this is the look back ip and this is the port it's listening to and this is the name of the uh, so you should submit yes i don't test so we, we, we are talked we left a task here where is that with me now we left a task here section four mm -hmm. so the assignment is here it said make the added make the identify yourself button that is on the web page to ask for the user's name and respond with a message like hello the user uh the name when the button is clicked so right now if you click on that button nothing happens if you, if you hover around it something happens but if you click on it nothing happens so we want something to happen we'll click on it and that's what you're talking about so um who did um who wants to help us because there are several ways to get it done who wants to help us get this thing done Sorry, can, you, can you come again yeah so one want to want to be able to have when we click on this thing right when we have to have it um ask for the user's name as ask you to enter your name i'm going to enter the name so something like hello or something like i mean anything anything you can be but well, basically want to want to get input from the user and use it to do something and to make it which interactive mm -hmm. Someone can help, anyone can help. Uh, your hand is raised, it will be. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. Okay, so we can start by writing a function. You may please be audible, more audible than you are. We can start by writing a function. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You can see my screen, right? I'm waiting for you. Okay, so... Um, what is that? Okay, so let's have a function that we are going to call um, prompt user. Please talk to me, go ahead. Yeah, put it uh, open and close parenthesis. So it does not take any argument. Okay. Oh, it doesn't take any argument. It won't take any argument. No, Please just wait. <laughs> Why is your all not completing? Okay, it's completing. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is okay, when we click, we want to get a prompt, right? That's going to ask the user's name. That's what you said, right? Okay. So we are going to say username equals, sorry, let's do let username equals, don't use let, sorry, I'll be able to say it's const. Let's use const. <laughs> Username. Can we use camel case for the username, please? All right. Const username equals um, then we call the prompt function. So inside the prompt, we want to ask what is your name, I'll be right. 
something like that. Okay, so just type what is your name in between the yeah, double quotes with a question mark. What is your name in oh wow, that's nice. Please stop us. What is your name? Okay, then put okay, it's, it's fine. Then the next line. The next line is going to be a message. So we'll say red message uh, or still const sorry, const message. Equals then um, a string. Put the open and close double quotes. Yeah. So now put. Um, so after the user types their name, then we to say welcome. So do welcome. Then come out. Uh, put a space before the close of the code, um, double quotes. Welcome space. Good. Then outside the double quotes, put plus username. All right, then in the next line, we'll say alert message. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to create an on click um, event list. Event list in there are different ways to do it, but the simplest way would be to go to the HTML file and use on click as an attribute in the button tag. So, so then, I'll click like this. Yeah. So in between the double quotes, we'll call the name of our, we'll call our function, which is prompt user with the parentheses. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so you're done like this. Yes. I click on it, it says what is your name? And then it says welcome top man. Oh the key. Great. Great one. Uh hey. she says that it is easier to do it. Ah, cool, cool, cool. Ah, uh, there are several ways we can get this done. Actually, several ways we can get this done. What if I take this off? Let me try some things now. Let me try two more ways. Um, and just come here and see. Um, and get it from here. Let's see. You come up here and say const. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Um, excuse me. No, I have to take permission to go because my phone battery is low and ah, I don't have no problem. Ah, honey, come said you have done, would have done that now. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so. No problem. So, um, I call this identifier. Identifier. I say let it be equal to. I call this method document dot query selector i feel like I, I feel like we should have more buttons but just in case oh if you now if i not import if i now reference button by referencing button what if you now have more than one button that's where id becomes important so i, I should give this guy an id if i give this guy an id and say um your id is identify Identify. I can now go here and get the ID instead of using button. And I go here and to get the ID, remember, hash identify. So I've got it. And then after doing this, I cannot come here and say identify dot on click. 
Mm -mm. Add event list now. Okay. Okay. Add uh, event listener. Then I have. I just still on click now. Does still start and work like that? Is there no start and work like that? Okay. Let's see. That's this one that you can call the guy directly and give it on click and give it a value. I will try it. We'll see. Try it. Let's see whether this will work. Let's see whether this will work. Let's see whether this will work. Yes, no. So you can see that right now I've not actually, apart from adding an ID, which is which I could do with that in this at this level, I've not done anything to the HTML document. Let's see whether this will work. If it does not work, we'll find out why. Yeah, so it's just the same thing. Click. Uh, it says welcome top man. Great. Let's try what I was trying to do earlier. Uh, so let me comment this line off. And see, let's try to work on whether it makes sense. Add a divide dot on click. Is it like a suggestion? It though? Are you serious? On click equal to prompt user. I would be able to see it and see do it. Add the This guy is saved automatically, right? So you see it. Let's see. I thought it works. Ah, so it worked. It worked. So you've just done it in three ways right now. In fact, Matt, can you refresh your browser? Uh, Does your browser refresh automatically? Life server should refresh it now. So it's supposed now. I've clicked it. I've clicked it several times. Life server is supposed to refresh the browser, so it's working. Oh, some life server doesn't refresh. Uh, top man. So he says, "Welcome, top man." Uh, one interesting thing to notice is how that if I don't put any name here, it still says welcome, empty strings. And if I cancel it, it takes null, uh, which is supposed to be um, a significant uh, a, a pointer to the fact that uh, there is no object, absence of an object. You know, undefined is the absence of a value, the variable, where null is absence of an object. So it still says welcome null. That's those are things you control. You check for them and control. Make sure. This does not do not happen. Check if the person does not enter anything. Do something, you know. But I'm going to skip that because of what you have to do today. You can you can play with that. Or what do you suggest? <laughs> Should we play with this document some more? Have some buttons here. Should we play? Should we play? Okay, let me let me play a bit. Let me have. I did something while I was. But let me have an empty. An empty this thing here. H tree tag um let me give you an idea of um signed in signed underscore in is this naming convention <laughs> aladdin is it i don't i'm not sure whether that's the naming convention so this is item giving it so i want to go and catch it here i will see hmm Good for me. Signed in. And let it be document dot query selector. Yeah, it's also another we can get this in rather than send. Okay, I think we touched that last time, right? So I want to get the ID direct, not the head tree itself. And so um, the ID is um, signed in. Signed in and okay. So what I want to do now, I want to modify this function. I want to modify this function. Wow. In fact, I want to have a callback function here. Uh okay. I won't delete this. I'll just keep it so you see it. And keep it commented. Okay, now I'm doing this in a fresh on um, click equal to now. I'm using arrow functions. I, I think arrow functions is one of the things I want to explain today. I mean, if you don't understand these things, what are we talking promises? Promises for promises, I think I wait, you will get more confused. So, I, I, in this in today's section, I intend talking about um, in fact, refreshing our mind. I have a clearer picture of what far does and what led does now. There's a big difference between them. I have a clearer picture now, and I have. I mean, we're supposed to learn 
things about default parameters and functions, arrow functions, callback functions, destructuring, you know, the structuring of objects and arrays. These are the things I rather want to teach today. And then we're just supposed to know about map, fit, and reduce, find, functional programming, the spread operator, the object property shorthand, the template retrial. Template retrial is not hard actually. I think I'm going to use it in my function now. That that thing that makes you call for the back tick. I if I'm if I'm wrong, please correct me. That thing that makes you call for back tick and give it some kind of template it in which the string will be printed. You know. So keeping some place blank and stating where it will get the content from by putting the variable there. Yeah. Okay. Uh I think those are the things I want to talk of. And then I will also introduce if there's still time, introduce the the what's it called now? The promises are sync and await. Yeah, promises. I introduce it put on a whiteboard, and then next section we'll go more into them. I think I think when I do these things, promises will make more sense to you. Not I mean when when I <laughs> when I was trying to read about it, say promises is uh, is an object that can be returned as a synchronous uh what synchronous uh, something value from an unsynchronous function something like that i say you boo where you boo i'm not blame you i kept i kept asking for a simple question and give me grammar <laughs> i had to start something for resources videos documents to understand what what it really is and that was how i understood it and discovered that ah even in writing it is not the place where i come and do this function prompt user is not that place you'll be seeing you'll be seeing brackets and arrows function inside function a function that is calling another function inside it having has another function in fact we have return value return value is housing functions with some control structures waiting for each one to execute i was talking about it already let me just do this um so i want to have an arrow function here hey, i hope i'm i hope i don't make mistake with the with the syntax <laughs> uh huh? is that it there should be i don't know if i make mistake here is your photo i should be something like this right showing that uh... <laughs> okay so what do i want to do i want to talk to me is this any mistake already uh, i'm not sure what you want to do I want to use a callback call function. Callback, <laughs> call anonymous, and arrow function to perform the same thing that we did. And then I want, I want it to print that you're signed in here. You know, there, there is an invisible H3 tag here now, H3 element here. So I want it to fill it using the test content method. Fill it with the name that just entered and say you are signed in. You understand? Why is my course not blue? Yeah. Wait, let me take this off first. Yeah, take that one off first. Mm -hmm. That one means. Uh, I'm on. I just cut my voice. That means I'm on. <laughs> okay, so prompt. Uh... Let me be more polite than it will be. Kindly enter your name, please. No. <laughs> what did you say? Hello, hello. Like my say. I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a condition that I'll make the person to say it's by force but future name. Let's see how that this will work first. So const no, this 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 okay. So where we go, where we go, where we go. Um next now to do is a lot. Uh, no, I think I need a template which are you have successfully Signing. Signing. User. 
Mm-hmm. <coughs> okay. Then I want you to grab. Have I gotten that guy? I've not gotten that guy yet. So let me grab it. Okay, is it here? Signed in. I'll grab it. So um signed in. I'm gonna apply it. I'm gonna use the test content method on signed in. So signed in dot test content. That'll be equal to string literal you are signed in as mm -hmm. <clears throat> I hope this works username mm -hmm. okay Let's see, let's see whether this works. Let's see whether this works. Let's see, let's see, let's see. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Oh, kindly enter your name, please. Don't mind some people that are developing website and they'll be shouting on you. Please. Top man. Paul DK. When I when I click OK. It says you you have successfully signed in Topman for DK the game and then it clicks you are signing as Topman for DK. Let me even study this until it makes I think it will make sense if it's for the left. Uh, so let me let me copy what I have here. Hello, my network has been going off. I wanted to say something. Hello, can you hear me? I have it here. No. Talk to me. Hello. 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 Is my screen frozen? Let me leave and turn back. Nobody's talking. Is it him or? I can hear you. What do you uh... My screen is clear. You are on VS Code. Move your mouse. Let me see. No, I'm not VS Code right now. Um, oh, I just ran something on the web. Oh, yeah, I'm still uh -oh. seeing. Shit. No, no, my screen is my screen is actually frozen. It's really frozen. Hold on, please. Got it. Right. So let's make progress. Um, let's now run I'll this. Ask a question. Uh, hold on, let me finish. Ask, let me finish running. Uh, it will be so. It says you've successfully signed in. It will be, and it says you're signing as it will be. So, ask a question, please. Um, in this, your code, yes. what's the difference between the on click or method that you attach directly to that um, document that you've gotten and um, the add event is now? And using click there. Okay. Everybody's looking for a way to be to make this thing simple now. <laughs> it's easy. Uh, there could be some more professional or more in-depth explanation. I don't know too much about it, but Actually, what I've learned so far. Saying this on click. Using use directly like this. In directly like this, okay. <laughs> Mostly I see them use add event with some, but there should be a reason why. Yeah, there should be a reason. I'll check for you and then get back to you. Yeah, I'd like to learn. Please don't forget to get back to us. But I've learned that this guy, eh, we are actually manipulating either the CSS or the HTML. Remember I told you that this guy, this CSS now, how come you're just putting body here and it's working on the body? Because, because by putting body here, you've accessed everything that is inside this tag called body. It has its own copy. It has, I think... I have reason to believe that he has access to the dome already as well. <laughs> it's part of the dome. Of the, because, I mean, 
What's up? Why is it able to assess this by just saying body? That means body is existing already. You know? But it's existing already where it is. So he knows he can it, it's able to apply the whole color to the body and the the alignments that we want to the body. Okay, and then we'll say um um now there, 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 this guy by doing this uh, this this guy has to do with it's like CSX selector. Because CSS, if you notice, CSS also uses hash to refer to ID. So there are some of these methods that works, that makes a reference to that particular um, item or object um, using CSS selector. CSS has the ability, you have seen that CSS has the ability to, ability to select, you know, from this document to select the part it wants to work, work on. So there's such a thing and then there's the one that goes to the html itself the document itself and uh, i don't know how to <laughs> i don't know how to break this into a piece so i wait for your explanation when it comes when it comes so uh this is it right we, we we've we've made our web page our fancy web page are more interactive and it's doing what we want maybe we should add another button here you can use to sign out uh but but that wouldn't be now you can just play play with the code play on your own yeah play with the code and um i don't want you to print none look at it you're sending none so what do i do <laughs> let me can force this out it's by force so you must sign it i'll come here check for the condition i say uh, um set a function i say if i'll say if um username um is not okay let's say there's no username if there's no username that is if not username you you may know about not operator like if you don't know if you put anything you don't know here please call our attention because remember we are assuming that you know at least one programming language that's why i'm not explaining everything you know that's why i'm not doing in-depth explanation of everything but if we do the one that you understand please call our attention so if not is if does not exist uh uh, let's see a lot then start call this function again yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted, I wanted to call itself back again, but I could not do that to... How do I do that? <laughs> uh, okay, I won't command this function. <laughs> I call it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I say call this function. I be able to turn this up. Okay, I better please talk to me. I wanted to call itself back, like like something like recursion, something like well, not necessarily recursion, but since it's an anonymous function, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to do that. You can just um change uh, your line font, your line fourteen. Fourteen, okay. To say that let username to be equal to. Just just make it to be uh, to keep prompting that um or just make it to keep prompting the kindly enter your name instead of calling the function all over again i don't know if you get i, I don't get uh, or just do what you want to do first then i'm still figuring out another way to actually do it i've gotten the difference between this one click and the, um the hard event listener though okay talk to us so this um on click adding it directly like this it always allow it only allows you to um how do I say self it only allows you to that approach only allows you to assign a single event adner that's um on click you cannot assign okay. any other what event adner to it but okay. using the add event listener you can add multiple so like um, appending yes just okay. like um just like you can use the same Let's say we are adding event uh, add now, uh, event listener now. We can use yeah. we can add another. 
Hey, I can hear you again. Is it still there? I think it's gone. Oh. Hey, no. My phantom does not have a name, so I don't know how to call it. Like, I want to check that if this guy does not enter, it says by force, so I'm call the function again. Start over here. So if the guy enters the name, it should not go skip this if block and come here and execute this one. That's what I want to do. Um, well, I don't know how oh, to do that's that. that's an idea. Okay. So I'm thinking that you should have a function that... Um, I'm thinking that your function right should uh, you should just have a function that would ask the user for their username for their name rather yeah uh, that that will work that will work that's why i ordered to use your own here uh but it will just ask them it will not alert anything then we will now do um sorry wait i'm still thinking <laughs> see uh, if if this like i'm using um some arrow function if this function was separate from this on click where i now come and say on click is equal to that function it would have been easier to do it inside the function yeah yeah um, yeah, but, yeah. Mm, so maybe i should do that one maybe let me do that one maybe so i will um in my usual manners i wouldn't want to waste this code so i'll just comment it Oof. Okay, no, sorry, what I was saying will still allow you to use your arrow function, but just that you have a separate um, function. So your arrow function will call that function if um, user is, whether user is um, equal to something or not. So your arrow function will call that function if there is a username and if there is no username. Yeah, basically. If there is no username. If there is no username. If there is no username your arrow function we call i don't know why i'm talking again <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying that i'm thinking you have a function that basically prompts the user for their username then inside your arrow function you will call that function great so that's if, it yeah, yeah okay if there's no if let me see empty i call the function again you know yeah. I, I get you i get you so um if you didn't get what you said replace this part of the video and get it and do it by yourself. I want to skip this now. Let's do something else. I'll we'll just create a new file. I think I need to create a new directory and leave this one. Uh, let me, how do I factor this right now? So let's do some other things. Uh, section five. Mm, we'll call this one. I will save, I will make a directory called previous assignments and save all of this inside here. Previous assignment. All right, so I'll now move everything this inside here. What command, what command will make that, make me achieve that? <laughs> what, co what command in this life? Okay, I think I know, move everything that ends with s and read me and practice into previous this is well this one means move everything that ends with dot s not s okay, okay. <laughs> okay, read this already moved, I believe. But now read me on this one that already moved. Okay. Great. So I have it there now. Let me be sure everything is intact. Okay, so I want to create another directory. What will I call this one now? And uh, then 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 what will I call this one? I'll call it what about JS? Sorry, did you get the expansion I gave on? And on click, yes, we got it. Although you got, I got it. How that add an event listener we can make you um add some more events to that particular yes, so element. Same. But yeah, on exactly. click, by doing on click, you're just taking one thing, and that one thing is the on click. It's just on click, yeah. Mm, I got that. Thank you. 
So let's open this directory here. More about JS. Let's talk about about default parameters and function. By the way, I hope you uh, ah, it's like we're going to take longer, longer than I expected. <laughs> Let me create a file. I'll call this one more.js. What is this? spelling the name is what you're doing in class. So remember that we did some explain. You can go back to that first video if you don't understand this part. We are with about var and, and the, the let keyword. Now, what I've discovered recently is that this guy is see that thing called hosting. Like that hosting is loyal to this guy. It does not dare host their values. Hoisting only works with this guy and start to be corrected. It's only var. Hoisting is that process where you declare a variable, you, I mean, you declare a variable down here, but the declaration is available up. You know, it doesn't work with these guys. These guys, they are, they are block scoped. This one is function scoped. And when we say function scoped, remember that this, all of this file now is a main function. All of this file now is a main function. Inside a function is another function, you know. So the, the let works with the, the scope. It's what if, if we have a function here, let's say um function a function <clears throat> and we have this and we have let we have a let inside here, it will it will it will stay within this block of code. If we have var inside here as well, it will still begin within this block of code. Now, what is worthy of note is that for let, if I have several lines of code here, come on, stop disturbing me. But I'm suggesting anything, I want to put dot, dot, dot only. Don't mind what I'm writing. Just trying to illustrate. So, and I have a variable declared somewhere here. Var, var variable equals whatever. Now, this guy, this var variable, this declaration is available up here. Up as if like, like it's the first line. That's the same thing that happens in the file, in the whole of the file. So, if you come, if you come and declare a variable outside here var anything you you will find it because you're giving it this block this function you're giving it the entire function the main function to it to go to line one and stay the declaration will go to line one and stay although it will be undefined at that point at the point where you did the, the declaration the declaration and initialization uh, I mean, at the point where you declare the variable and give it a value, that's where it will give you the value. But up here, it will be declared. But let, for let, since it's block scope, let from that block down. So if it's outside a function, inside your main, main function, from that block down, it, like, it like, just like see that execute line by line, it will not respect that order. It will not be available anywhere up here. It will be available, it will only be available down. That's that about that. And then um the word, I mean, constant is the most recommended so far, the most recommended keyword to create variable. So you just look for except when it cannot be used, use constant. <laughs> except and you know when it cannot be used, right? When you have plans to change the value of the variable. Right? And that you're using const does not mean you cannot mutate the content. You cannot reassign, but you can mutate. You can change, you can cause do some changes that's by the way as to make progress might learn more about that and then so what is it about default um um parameters in function please i think i'll be taking votes before i talk about anything so i i will not be boring you so who who votes i need your vote should i talk about default parameters does it is it something to i need your votes if i don't count on the three votes then i will skip it Great. So no, no vote. Now should I talk about arrow functions? <coughs> no votes as well. You just if you want to vote, just raise your hand though. I'm actually not looking at the income message. 
Yeah. I'm seeing one. I'm I'm looking for at least three votes. I'm seeing one vote. Be cool. I saw two now. Kalimoni, are you going to vote? Thank you. We need to talk about the arrow function because it's very essential to the ES6 um printer. The ES6 yeah, it's not No, we don't need to vote. <laughs> that that arrow function is very, very essential. It's okay. It's okay. Now let's write a function. I think I will, I will mix it with callback function. The call the the, the the word call the term callback you know what it does because this is guys that promise is uh, you will promise yourself into confusion if you don't know these things <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was what i just saw i mean seriously it gives you return values having functions return values returning fun functions that has control structures one if the if the promise was resolved the other one is if the promise was rejected you know you can even add try catch and we've not even used try catch in this series, but I believe you, you may have used it on your own because we don't have to do everything together, right? So callback functions, arrow functions, and arrow functions has something to do with um anonymous function. Right? It, it, it might not be arrow function and yet be anonymous, but every arrow function is an anonymous function. A function can be anonymous and not an arrow function. But every arrow function is an anonymous function. When we say anonymous, it's saying unnamed, you know, um, unnamed, um, something that has to do with hidden. Uh, but by the way, by the way, a little emphasis on strict equality. There's something called strict equality in JavaScript where we use triple equal to. You know, so if, um, let's, let me just do this. If twelve she called twelve. Let me just I've not tried this before, but let's try it. <laughs> I know I like trying new things. Console dot log the uh the same otherwise um give me this have it here they are different okay let's I just gonna see what happens so Let's run this code now. See what happens. Is is it not? It's just not interesting. They are the same. You don't try this in Python. <laughs> you don't try this in C. You saying they are the same. I'm giving it an integer and 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 a string. You saying you saying they are the same. There comes the re reason for strict equality. When you make this equality side of the tree, it's in Java. It's only in JavaScript I've seen this so far. Or in all the programming languages I know. So in JavaScript I've seen this. I see on after guys do I know 20 programming language. I see I see no less than 10. <laughs> okay. So um I've tried a new B. Puppets. My SQL. Oh, I don't try like C Python. <laughs> so if I do strict equality now, strict equality check. Strict equality check not just for the value. The, the value inside but the data type as well so if i go and run it again it says they are different that's by the way let me comment that off i don't know why vs code does not understand multi-line commenting in javascript is it that multi-line comment is, is updated it is deprecated all right so callback function arrow function if i if i want to have a function yeah uh -huh, let me put this inside a function okay Let's just make progress on there. Let me put this inside a function. The function checks for 12 and 2. Or let's say the function checks for two things. So let's say function that takes two variables. So check, I'll call it check value. Check value. And it takes two variables, value one and value 
um, well, it two. Okay, so what it does is this. Um, I'm going to indent this and change this to value one. If value one. Value one. Yeah, you don't. What? I was to say you don't need, you don't need to manually um adjust the formatting yourself. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Ooh, thank you. I know that guy. Pretty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, control alternate F. It didn't work. Oh. Control alt F. Control shift. Why is it not working? Oh, control shift F. Or just right click and check it. It did not work. Did it work? Yes, right it. click and check. Let's now shift. Oh, shift shift alt F. Command document. Shift Alt F. Okay, thank you. Top man, get used to it. <laughs> Little bit efficient, speedy, save time, save space. Okay. So if value this and value this is this, let's uh, so um let's call the function here now. Um, now the function. Let me demonstrate callback function with this. Now let's check again. I'm calling the function now. Check. Let's give it three. Let me even sorry. Let me message the bit. Check with a three. And the string three. Let's say check with a thirty three hundred and the string three zero zero are the same. And of course, it's not checking for data type, it's just checking for what is inside. Uh, let's run this. I'm going to clear this and run it. So it says they are the same. They are the same. How does callback function work? Uh, I hope I'm not mistaken. I think you need to put this, you need to put the bracket here. Am I correct? And put a bracket here. And then another bracket here that will carry the argument when it comes to it. So here, yeah. uh, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Is it from here? Something is wrong. Something is wrong. What's the right way? What am I guessing wrong? Somebody help. Help, please. Oh, sorry, I wasn't here. Um, okay, seems that we, since you are good now. Since yeah. you are good now. So I have I have put all of this in a bracket. Let's see what it works. Since this is good. Okay, let's see. I'm clearing this. So it's checking 300 and it's checking 300. So it's working. That's what callback function. Callback function is I don't need to define the function and call it later. I call it as soon as I'm defining it. So by putting all of this thing inside bracket, all of this is inside bracket, and then attaching another bracket that has the argument that this guy takes, the function runs. So if this guy takes no argument, if this guy takes no argument, then this one should have no argument as well. Just put an empty parenthesis here, it will run. It will run, but in our case, it takes arguments to arguments to the matter. I demonstrated callback function, callback function. Uh, you say you don't, you say we, we say we are good for default values. I don't need to that, right? Now, what makes a, a function anonymous? A function is anonymous when we don't know the name. Let me try this, it works. So, let me not make it a callback function again. No, the anonymous functions are usually callback functions. I start to be corrected. They usually come back functions. They run at once. And those functions, if you ask me, I believe, I think they are functions that are needed just that time. Just that once. Because there is no way you can refer to it to call it back again. I'm, I'm not aware of any way. You it, saw that how that some minutes ago I was trying to call back my function inside a function. I didn't know how to call it because it was an arrow function. Maybe there's a way. Maybe there's a way. But... Okay, so here is it does not have a name. 
but some values are here i guess this is correct there is no warning so let me run it now so it says they are the same so it's checking it's working this is an anonymous function anonymous function has no no name now what is arrow function arrow function is the point we are in fact we can actually save all of this in the variable you know can actually love this in the variable let's see let me stop making it a callback function by removing this from here i think i might need this so let me take this down and let's just say i'm declaring some constant variable constant variable and i'm calling it check and i say check is equal to this when i say what i said check is equal to this then I, I have to bring the arrow here indicating that uh, i'm actually declaring a function by doing this i have made check it is supposed to be a variable because that variable i have made it a function that takes two arguments value one and value two this is arrow function for you so let's now do, do, do this and see whether it works. No complaint, no error. I'm going to clear this output. I run the code. So it's working, it's working well. This is arrow function for you. First, you put the name I want to use, if you want to save it in the variable below, because I believe this guy should run even without being saved in the variable. It should run. It should run like this. I'm going to clear this output and run it again. Let's see. Error check is not defined. Okay, I want to do check. So if I do it like this now, it's not saved anywhere, so I can't call it check again. Okay, so yeah, it has to be a callback function, right? So I have to put a bracket here and another bracket here. Okay, we are good, right? Let's see. Run. Why did not put any value? Okay, I did not give it argument. <laughs> Uh, check that C and the string that for me. So it says they are the same. You can see that it's running now. This is arrow function for you, it's, it's running. But I, I don't have a way to use this thing again. Using this thing again will mean to copy all this code. Start over. But if I save it inside the variable, like I was going to do earlier, constant. A constant variable that you don't change, you don't reassign. I cannot be reassigned. I can call that guy, which was check. I can call it, I can just call it again and say, take this value, compare, take this value, compare, make it be usable. So, arrow function has a way of um, making uh, our code more concise. Let me more concise, straight to the point. And it brings about implicit. Let me put that word here. Yeah. Implicit. That's implicit. And that's explicit. Return. Um, valid uh, function returns. So explicit is where you return with the key, return keyword. Implicit is where you return without using the return keyword. For example, if I wanted to. Let me comment this all as well. No, no. What am I doing now? Yeah, I'm correct. And all right, so that's now a comment. If I want to write a function that adds to I return the, the addition of two um numbers, the more we the one will be function add num and of course one is specify that it takes let's say x and y x y and what it does to them is that it returns um x plus y this is explicit return S plus y and all of this can be on one line yeah, right all of this can be on one line so if, if we have it like you could have it like this uh, 
uh, like this as well. Uh, that's it, right? Do I need to put any column at the end? I don't think so. Okay, let me use my format and see. I don't want to leave my code the way it is, John. Great. So I can I can have another function. Yeah, I'll call this one add. I think this guy is case sensitive. So let me take advantage of the fact that it's case sensitive and do add num. I mean, I could just come. Like, okay, let's let me make it another function. Function unknown. It takes. It takes no no no. That's it. No function that takes x. And why if you pay attention to to um macros in C programming, at least if you know C, sorry if you don't know C, pardon me please. It's called that it's, it's something similar as explained. Like that's why I agree that C is fun indeed. And I'll put the arrow here. What I want you to do is simply perform x plus y for me. So I go x plus y. Isn't that interesting? Just like there's no way to execute them. Or the, the, way, the, the way to execute this one now is to now come and do add num. Add num. I see. What is happening here? Why is this guy on the line now? Don't try me on. That's an error from here. I expected this. We are. Could it be here? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's right here. We are now. Hey. Okay, let me format this guy with the prettier format and see what happens. See, not working. Somebody help, come to my aid. What is happening here? What is going wrong here? What is happening to my arrow function? Is he trying to not work? So add num two four should give us six. Right? Okay, my my, my function is fine. Add num two four should give us six. Let's run it. Hmm. Okay, I did not save the return value anywhere. Okay, so let me save it in. Let me just say console log. Console dot log. Dot log. If I put this whole thing inside this function and run it again, it gives us six. Now let's see this one too. If I say, uh, if I finish defining this and Make it a callback function. Let's see. And let's say, how do I call this function now? Callback function. And I want to give it a value of four and six, which will give us 10. A statement and of course I want to put it out to the to the console so let me get this <laughs> I need some feedback <laughs> I will see <sit> together <laughs> I need some feedback everywhere is calm I've been the only one talking since yeah hand is raised is that some signal I want to talk if I want to speak, please unmute and speak. I have a question. Okay. Uh, the 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 arrow fac function okay. must you call it? Must you call it like a callback function always? No. No. You, you can choose to store it in a variable. I did that some minutes ago. You can choose to store it in a variable and call it when you want to. So that variable now will be functioning like a, acting like a function. You, keep, you call okay. the variable and give it parentheses, put the arguments to work. So let's see whether this is working. Undefined, why? Okay. I think this is not needed. Let's see. 
let's see. I think I should give you the value straight. Uh, will this work? Will this work? Okay, I'll clear this. Error. No. Why is this thing undefined? What's 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 happening? What's happening now? Um, undo those changes. Okay. So actually, there is no um. Just undo undo the fans back. Put return x plus y. Return x plus y. Yeah. Okay, I was trying to return that value without using that return because I know it's possible. Yeah, it's going to help me find out how. Wait first. Huh? It's actually possible, I know. Wait, that's what I'm aiming at. Put the return first. But I'm not sure if that is why it's showing not defined. So, it worked. Yeah. So, I, I, my aim is not achieved then. I want to I want to return this value without using I want to return it implicitly. Which is one of the advantages of using arrow function. So how do we get that done? How do we get that done? Undefined. How do we get that done? That should be a way. That should be a way. There might be something I'm missing here that's making it not return. But then you may find out there's something I'm missing here that's making this not return. But not to stay long here, I have been able to show you what callback function, what we mean by callback. What you mean by arrow functions and how they are okay. used? Uh -huh. I've gotten it. It okay, is this. Um... Oh, we've lost him. Why is it not being like this now? I'm waiting for you to come back and tell us while is uh, while is um uh, what is way back. Um, let's talk about the structuring. Our time is actually up. What do you think? Should I continue with this stuff? Somebody talk. I think we should continue. Okay, I need two more, two more responses. I think we should continue on Wednesday. I mean, on Friday. <laughs> on Friday. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, uh, go ahead, so please. This network is really frustrating me. No problem. I'm already getting pissed. I got some closest them go sleep. Um, <laughs> I swear I'm getting pissed. Talk already. to me. <laughs> um. You know, just like you have in um, when you want to, when you have a single line of code that you just remove that um, the, um that curly braces, you just write your code. It's the same thing you do here on line 15. Remove the curly braces. This is just a single statement. Okay. So it's just anything you pass, there will be the return value. Yeah. So it's, it's good like this. Yes. Good to go like this. All yes. right, let's run it again. <laughs> My brother, I brother need control shift N. <laughs> <laughs> Control Alt N. Let's go. So down here it's run. Thank you. So I didn't need the curly braces. So I have returned this value implicitly. I returned some value without using the return keyword in JavaScript. That's one advantage of arrow. You can imagine now. You can imagine that from here, from here to here, is a function. The reason why we added this bracket open here and bracket closes to make it a callback function right and uh, otherwise that was enough that was enough and this is now we're giving some argument you know argument whereas this one if you want to try to make it one line in fact if i use the pretty format and now see what it does so um shift alt f you can see it says it's supposed to be like this I mean, there's something about there's something conventional about arranging this code like this. So if I use the same thing here, yeah, shift alt f, it's not touching it. it. Means that this one is okay. That means this is supposed to be a three line of code, uh, three lines of code, a three line code, <laughs> uh, code of three lines for that. And then this one, a code of one line. Simplicity, simplicity. I mean, <laughs> I saw a guy. JavaScript is wonderful. Though. The things we can do using loop to run through something, maybe using loop to look through an object to get something, a particular property. Property, 
ah that map function simply doing dot map we just got it for us without us doing some loop in one line yeah, that's something about being efficient that's what makes you a senior developer now that's the difference between <laughs> that's one difference between junior developers and senior developers what you will write in 10 lines somebody will come and write it in three lines and it's doing the same work yeah, if not even doing more okay so someone is saying someone is of the opinion that we should continue on friday i, I was going to go into the structuring um yeah the structure of arrays of you're going to experiment with arrays and objects and then there's there is so much to learn actually and then we'll talk about oop but um I, i'm um we are having two opinions here one says we should continue the other one says we should um continue in the next section okay so let me get a response in the income messages sorry in the income message Make it a response there. What do you think? Oh, back to sender. My screen is not frozen. <laughs> Are you going? Somebody's going to country here yeah, in my class. How come? <laughs> nobody's, but nobody's talking. So we're ending here now. Okay, please read about these things. Read about the um map function okay cannot get what what happened to it okay let's have i cannot get it again now understand i removed it uh, so read about map let me write it out here uh, these guys are uh, they come in handy in functional programming you know functional programming is is the guy we have in contrast with um oop so functional programming versus object it like this object oriented <coughs> programming All right, so these guys, no one, no one, no one is able to replace one another. They are not the same. One might be more efficient in the in certain uh, circumstances, or scenario, you know, than the other. So it's good you know both of them, and and so that the one that works more efficiently in a particular case or circumstance should be used. And then so read about and do something with map feature these guys like i said they come in handy in function programming functional programming rather feature we have reduced and then we have find they are actually methods um i'll call them methods now i'll try call them functions they are functions <laughs> they are methods as well they use as methods uh, of course, methods method are function. What's the difference between method and function? Anytime we did anything that we did dot to call is is a method. Look at the way we call this method fun function. Look at the way we call it. We said add num, and then we passed the argument in parentheses. If we had called it as anything, whatever it is, let's say a variable or an object, most accurately, an object dot add num, then it's a it's what is happening here? Huh? Go away from that place. <laughs> Add no. Okay. If you have done something like this, then it makes it a method, not a function. A method is what you find mostly here and why do, why then do they call map feta what 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 um things that also do with functional programming we learn how to make progress and then um you also want to learn about spread operator let's see spread operator and then you also want to learn about um what's this guy now object property like how to shorten object property so 
call it object property shutting don't be overwhelmed right don't be overwhelmed you have the rest of this week to learn these things because and some of them you'll be learning them as we make as we do some projects right by now i know i'm sure you know what um template uh, uh literal has mean so when we come the next time i don't know if, I, if we have the time i may go through we may go through all of this and then talk about premises async await and i think closures 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 appear to be one very important concept in javascript in fact i had that i learned that it's something you're most likely going to be asked in certain javascript interviews they will test a little bit of closure and just like that so we are calling it a day here any questions any complaint any observation before we close finally all right okay i understand you telling us thank you very much thank you